Welcome to Terra at Home with your host, Chris Moretti. Good morning and welcome to Terra at Home. We're approaching the end of April now, and as we get into May, we start looking for fresh inspiration for the summer season in our gardens. A great place to start is the Royal Botanical Gardens, and I'm here now with Jody Vander Hayden, who works as part of the horticulture department there. Thanks so much for being with us, Jody. Thank you for having me. I understand there are all sorts of things to look forward to this season at the Royal Botanical Gardens, mm -hmm. and it's a, a fantastic place that's right in our backyard in Burlington. Tell us a bit about what you do and what to expect this season. Sure. Well, my role in the horticulture department is to keep track of the plants, which basically means that I map, database, and label all the plants in our gardens. And the fun part about that job is I get to see all the gardens in order to do that. Yeah. So a little bit about the gardens. Most people begin their visit at the RBG Centre, which mm -hmm. is on Plains Road. And from there, you can cross into our other four areas, which one is right across the street and is accessible through the tunnel. And there you'll find a number of gardens, amongst them our brand new vegetable garden, Great. a native plant garden, as well as rose collection and lily collection. And those are just the highlights. Yeah, you mentioned something, um, four different really major areas, and a lot of people, even who are right from here, don't realize how big the Royal Botanical Gardens really are. Absolutely. When you start at the RBG Centre, that can really fill a whole day, but there are three other areas just down the road a few kilometres, including the Rock Garden and the Arboretum, which are also great places to visit depending on the time of year. The first event of the season actually is the Tulip Festival which is held at the Rock Garden and the Rock Garden is a very interesting place because it was built out of a quarry mm. that was repurposed into a garden back in the uh, 1930s so now you go in there and you see terrace levels of gardens that are all full of tulips in the early spring so it's quite the stunning display. Fantastic as we as we're at the end of April now April 30th kind of marks one of the big kickoffs to your season. That's right because we're so big and there's so much to see at the gardens we thought what well, we do this year to kick off the season and get people familiar with what's going on at Royal Botanical Gardens we'd have an event called Taste of RBG. So basically it's from 11 to 4 on April the 30th and it's a chance for visitors to come see behind the scenes. So all of the staff at the gardens will be out in the gardens. There will be people from the horticulture department in the actual gardens, but there will also be people from the natural lands department that will be showcasing the natural trail systems that connect some of our garden areas. Nice. There'll be a display going on at the Fishway, which is down at by Coots Paradise to show people how that works. And we'll even some of the behind the scenes stuff that people don't usually see inside the building, like video conferencing, for example. Ah. We have a full-time staff member who does video conferencing on a daily basis to different parts of the world. And she'll be touring a butterfly conservatory in the USA. So just to give people an idea that we're not just gardens, but there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that we do and get them excited about the gardening season. Yeah, I know I'm excited. And something I really enjoy about visiting the Royal Botanical Gardens is that, as you suggested, all of the plant material in there is catalogued and labeled, so it can be a wonderful place to see what the possibilities are, get inspired, and then you can take pieces of that and, and make it your own. So to find those plants, I mean, I, I happen to know where you can buy some of the plants available. <laughs> of course, you can find the plants here at Terra, but to, to go to the RBG and see how they're used in such a grand scale can be so inspiring. Absolutely. I find that it's hard sometimes when you see a garden, a plant in a garden center and you see it in its little pot to yeah. see what it's going to become in your garden. So it's worth taking a walk through to see what you can find. You mentioned the veggie garden. That's yes. something that uh, was new. It was newly planted as of last fall. Tell us That's about that. That's right. It was installed last fall in September and it, it, we had a bit of a late start last year so we're really excited about this season and basically what it is it's called Veggie Village 100 mile produce gardens so we're trying to encourage people to eat local to grow their own food in their backyard for themselves for their community and the garden is actually really fun because there's nine different display vegetable gardens. So depending on what kind of space you have at home, you can get ideas. Some of my favorites are the Urban Edible Garden, which has basically silver edging around all the gardens and silver stakes on the plants, just showing people how you can have a really urban, trendy looking vegetable garden. 
And some of the plants in that garden this year are also going to be really fun, things like white eggplant or green cauliflowers, some of the things that we aren't all familiar with in the grocery store. I really like that, and I like the idea of sort of providing a new twist and some new inspiration in a vegetable garden. Mm -hmm. We all remember the vegetable gardens of, of our grandparents with uh, simple rows in a, in a big dirt plot but it's really taken on a new life and it's reaching a new generation, this idea of growing edibles, and you're presenting that in a, u a really unique way. Absolutely, and we haven't lost that history either. There's actually one of the gardens focuses on heritage and heirloom varieties, mm. so showing how our grandmothers had their gardens, interplanting marigolds and things like that to attract ladybugs to eat those aphids off of your tomato plants. So. We've, we have the old with the new, and we also have container gardens, which I ah. think in the urban landscape are becoming more and more valuable for people. So we've chosen cultivars of plants that are well suited to being grown in containers and showing people that you can still have vegetables with a small space. That's great. As more and more people are downsizing, uh, the lots are getting smaller mm -hmm. and more and more people are moving into things like condo situations where you've just got a balcony to work with and you can take a cue from that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. One of the container gardens is actually a friendly term called hippie garden and <laughs> basically what it involves is making a vegetable garden in any container you can find. So you'll find tomato plants growing out of rubber boots and out of tires and that sort of thing. So sort of a reduce, reuse, recycle sort of message for that garden. That's really fun. Um, outside of veggies, there's certainly a world to discover as well between the different types of gardens. Can you tell us about what to look forward to this season in, in different seasons and how it changes? Absolutely. Well, the big attractions at the gardens are always the bloom festivals. Yeah. And that will start with the tulips festival and then the lilac festival later in May. We then move on to the rose festival and there's various activities going on between all of those. One of the things that kids can do at the gardens is whatever is hot that week at the gardens there's a discovery cart placed in that area and kids can go grab packs that they can take out and explore the garden. Ah. So there's, there's a lot going on on a daily basis but the big festivals are also something to look forward to. So really it's somewhere that you don't have to be afraid to bring the kids. There are mm -hmm. great programs in place to get them engaged and excited about what's happening out there and uh, at any given time during the season there's something new to discover. Absolutely. Plants are amazing in that there are some that bloom right now. Actually the snowdrops are already up at the gardens. Right into well into the fall you can see all the beautiful fall colors so there's something to do every day and there's RBG is so large that you should come back on a regular basis to see it all. When you're planning your visit and sort of getting ready to spend your day, where should you begin? What should you bring? How should you start? Well, I think you should make sure that you pack your camera, first of all, yeah. but also prepare for a long day outside. We do have rest, the restaurant at the main building as well as tea houses in some of the gardens, so you can definitely take a lunch break or a tea break and really plan to spend the day at the gardens and come back. Awesome. Um, is there a website where people can find out more information about the programs happening? Absolutely. The website is www.rbg.ca and there you'll find information on all the programs that are offered as well as when the plants are blooming because that really depends on Mother Nature. Definitely. Absolutely. <laughs> Subject to change. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for being with us, Jody. Thank you for having me. Coming up after the break, more ways to kick into May this season on Terra at Home. Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. Oh, when we first bought the house, the lawn was nothing but brown. So I called my father-in-law. You know, he's really good with the lawn. He knows exactly what to do. Well, I told him, you're Scott's turf builder. He said, well, I got this other stuff. And I told him, take it back to the store. But some brands have filler, like sand and gravel, stuff you don't want on your lawn. Scott's turf builder is pure food. Every granule is 100% nutrition. You get what you pay for every time. You see what happens, Tim, when you listen to your father-in-law? <laughs> All food, no filler. That's the Scots Advantage. Welcome back to Tara at Home. 
several weeks ago, we were right here at Liaison College to learn about the Breaking Barriers, Breaking Bread program, a partnership between Hamilton Police, ProAction, Cops and Kids, and the staff here at Liaison. I'm now joined by Staff Sergeant Mark Cox and Jocelyn Garrett from ProAction to get a follow-up on the program. We're now nearing the close of the program. We've got it happening behind us right now. Thanks for being with us, both of you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. I'll start with you, Mark. Um, I'm, I'm understanding that it's been a lot of fun that's happened here. Can you tell us about uh, how the program's gone from your perspective? It has been just terrific. We've had uh, all these great little successes in terms of the cooking, watching recipes come together, and at the end of each night, the whole group sitting down together, enjoying a meal, and, and really enjoying each other's company, yeah. which is, has done exactly what we wanted to, to do, to break down barriers between police and youth in the community and build bonds. And that was the name of the game. For those who missed, who missed the intro episode, can you give us a, a little bit of a recap of, of what was the objective here? Well, that we named the program Breaking Barriers, Breaking Bread. And the idea was just that, that we bring together area youth and police officers to work together collectively to learn some cooking lessons, to prepare some food, and take away some life lessons in terms of healthy eating and nutrition, mm -hmm. as well as what they pick up along the way from the conversation between the two. Now, Jocelyn, uh, ProAction has been heavily involved in this program from a funding perspective and sort of getting the ball rolling. Can you tell us about it from, from your end? Yeah, ProAction is here in Hamilton, and we work with the Hamilton Police Services. And we've been here in Hamilton since about 2008. ProAction in Toronto has been for, here for, oh, in operation for 20 years this year. And uh, we're really proud to be here working with Hamilton Police. Mm -hmm. And when Mark came with, to us with his application for this program, we didn't hesitate in wanting to uh, fund this sort of thing. And it's just a wonderful way of police officers working with youth in Hamilton. Now, ProAction has been involved with, with cops and kids programs uh, similar to this for, for a lot of years, but nothing quite like this. How has this differed from other programs that, that you've run in the past? Well, in the past, we've done uh, camping programs, we've yeah. done canoeing programs down the Grand, uh, we've had sporting events, we've been to the Tiger Cats. So now, uh, this is sort of a unique program, but it's something that we certainly are very proud to have sponsored, and ProAction in Hamilton is just going to bloom from this kind of programming. So everyone's happy with how it's gone, it sounds like. Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, one of our big successes just last week, all the kids passed their safe food handling exams and now have another tool in their tool belt to go get jobs. Fantastic. Let's hear from some of the kids themselves, shall we? That'd be great. Fantastic. We're now joined by Chef Lindsay Renee and Keith, one of the students in the program. Thanks for being with us, guys. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Keith, from your perspective, have you enjoyed the program? Oh, I love it. I, I'd recommend it to anybody. Fantastic. Um, you've been here working with the cops and the chefs for the last uh, several weeks now. Did you ever figure you'd be uh, in cahoots with the cops for the last in nine weeks? No. <laughs> <laughs> and has it, has it been fun? Yeah, it has, actually. I really enjoy it. Was there a, a favorite dish that you prepared here? Uh, the chicken fricassee, I'd have to say. And that was early on in the program, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think the second weekend. Fantastic. Chef, from your perspective, how has it been working with the kids and the cops, having them invade your kitchen? Oh, it's amazing. You know, it's inspiring as a chef when you have uh, uh, individuals like yourselves coming in here and, and don't really know too much about uh, cooking, but take a passion and, and obviously uh, learn something and very respectful, enthusiastic. It's been a wonderful experience and I'm looking forward to doing it again, hopefully. Yeah. Um, preparing food is something universal. It's something that everyone has to do. Um, and for many people, learning some basic skills can really transform a lot of things. How has it changed how, how you your relationship is with food? I'm more confident cooking now. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been making things for your family? My mom has been asking me to cook dinner like nine times out of ten because <laughs> I'm doing this. <laughs> and uh, have you shown off your skills with any of your friends? Are they getting yeah, into it now too? They, they're looking at me going, oh my god, where did you learn it? <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, you recently got your food safety certificate, I understand. Yes. Everyone everyone passed the program, which is awesome. Very. Uh, do you see yourself going into a career in food preparation in some way? I never thought I would, but now I'm more interested in doing it. It's wonderful. Yeah. 
and uh, Chef, from from your end as well, I, you, you'd be happy to do the program again, as you said. Oh, absolutely. This yeah. has been really inspiring for me, and, and I've enjoyed it thoroughly. That's great. Yeah. Did awesome. you have a favorite? Uh, there were more than one of you working with the program from a chef. Yeah, Chef Bill and myself, end. we took turns. Did yes. you have a favorite, Keith? <clears throat> Chef Lindsay. There Naturally, you go. Of, of course. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hear from another student right now. Staff Sergeant Mark Cox and I are now here with another student of the program, Christine. Thanks for being with us, Christine. No problem. I'd love to hear how you enjoyed the program. Um, okay, well, I don't know, just like cooking. I like to cook, I love food. And then it's different because I never honestly thought that I'd work with cops like, yeah. at all. And, uh, it's definitely different than what I thought it was going to be. Like, I thought it would be kind of awkward and weird, but like, I don't know, I feel equal to them. I don't feel like they're like higher authority. Like, I know they are, but it's different. So it's changed the way that you see cops yeah. in general. Yeah. Did you have a favorite moment in the program or a favorite dish that you prepared here? There's a lot of food that I like, <laughs> to be honest. I, like, there, even some foods that I don't like, I tried it. And it was all right, actually. It wasn't that bad. I tried some foods that I, I didn't like, but it's still good. It's different. It's experience, you know? Yeah. Do you think it's something that you would go into as a career now? Uh, possibly. I mean, I've had different already career choices, but like, it's something I could do and it's something that I've learned and it's enjoyable. Has it changed the way that you cook at home, too? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. You try things more out of just the book. Like you add your own thing. So you've developed a bit of flair in the kitchen now where you've got the confidence to yeah. sort of experiment a little yeah. bit. Just add more things to it, yeah. Fantastic. Mark, for you, has there been a, a shining moment in the program that you want to share? I think the, uh, the shining moments are when I see the kids like Christine take something out of the oven and just the smell catches them and I see the smile and everybody digs in and says, this is great. Yeah. And it's a real sense of accomplishment. I, I can see it in, in all the kids that uh, they really get that sense of, I made this yeah. and I can do it. Yeah. And it's been great to watch their confidence build over the weeks. I think that's probably the best part. At the end of the class, at the end of each, each time yeah. you're here, you all sort of sit down together and get to eat what you've created yeah. together. Yeah, it's, it's good. Like, and, and that's another thing. Like, you meet people. Yeah. And it's, it's fun. Um, have you made friends with uh, other kids in the program then? Have you yeah. met people that you'd never, never yeah. known before? Definitely. I didn't know anybody, but you know, I talk to them all. I like people, so. That's great. So you'll stay in touch with some of the people you've met here? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks to both of you for being with us. Thank you very much. And Mark, thank you for bringing us into the program and showing us this from the inside perspective. Is it something that uh, you hope to do again? Absolutely. It's been a really rewarding experience. It's been a lot of fun, and as Christine said, just as she's met a lot of people, I have too. Yeah. Really enjoyed it, and we definitely hope to do it again. Fantastic. A wonderful success story here in the community of Hamilton. Thank you both. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> Back to our kitchen after this break on Terra at Home. Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. AM 900 CHML is giving you more news when you want it most. Non-stop news weekday mornings 5 till 9, weekday afternoons 3 to 6, with weather and traffic on the 9s. Hear about it first from AM 900 CHML, Hamilton's news talk leader. Welcome back to Terra at Home, where we've now returned to the Terra at Home kitchen and are joined by Chef Rachel. Thank you, Hi. as always, for being with us, Rachel. Thank you, Chris. And we're going to prepare a meal that's perfect for enjoying on the balcony, on the patio, mm -hmm. for a warm May night. Yes. We're doing uh, some fresh bassa tortillas today. Mm. Okay, so 
I have some bassa fillets here. Okay. Um, that's the fish I chose to do. I think a nice white fish would go great in this. Um, but if you have a, another favorite, you can definitely use that instead. So you could easily sub this out with sole or maybe a cod or a haddock, just a white fish in general would mm -hmm. work okay? Yes. Okay. Yes, I think so. Uh, tilapia is one of my favorites. Okay. That's just a personal favorite of mine, but I decided to use bassa today. So uh, we're just going to lightly season these. Nothing, um, nothing too fancy, just with some salt and pepper. Now, uh, fish tacos are, I think there's something that's great for the summertime. I think they're becoming more popular too. Mm -hmm. And uh, so another way to do fish tacos is to fry the fish too. So that's an idea if you want to do something a little different. Okay. This is a, a healthier version of that, I'd say. We're going to just do it with a little bit of oil in the frying pan. So I have my pan heating up. Now, if you've got the barbecue rocking outside, you could also do the fish on the barbecue and then incorporate it into a tortilla too with yes, the same toppings if you were already at it. Yeah, uh, that uh, works. Uh, of course. Okay, so this is nice and hot. So we'll just put the fillets right in there. You want to hear that nice searing and hot. sound? So a couple minutes on each side, and then uh, they'll be done. That's something I love about working with fish for a quick dinner on, on a weeknight or even if you've got company over on the weekend, you're enjoying some drinks on the patio, you don't want to spend forever cooking and fish is it's nice and quick, it's easy and uh, perfect light fare for summer. Yes. That, that is a great thing that, you know, the, how fast it cooks. Um, you could do it in the oven too. Really doesn't take long when it's thin like this. Okay. So we can leave that just for a couple minutes on about medium heat. Yeah. So we want to cook it until it's, um, you know, nice and white throughout, until um, it starts to flake. That's when you know that your fish is ready. You kind of test it with a fork or a spoon, and when it flakes nice and easily, uh, you know it's done. So yeah. at that point, what we're going to do is we're actually going to break up the fillets, and uh, and that'll be what we, what we put in our tortillas. I see we have a whole colorful array of different ingredients here as well. These are going to serve as, as toppings for our, our fillets as well? Yes. We're going to make a salsa. I did this on purpose. Uh, I chose these ingredients on purpose because it is fresh and summery and I wanted it to look nice. Um, so start off with a mango. Mm -hmm. I chopped the mango into small chunks. So to that I'm going to add some sliced green onion. We're just going to do a little bit of this because there's only two of us. Mm -hmm. So just mix everything together. Some red onion as well. Nice and finely diced. Mm -hmm. Now I have some chopped garlic in here with a little bit of uh, red and orange hot pepper. Okay. These are called scotch bonnets. I used a little bit of each um, just again because I like the color of them. Uh, and they'll provide some nice heat too. A little bit of sizzle. They will. I just. When I'm, at the, when I'm at the store looking for hot peppers, I just kind of grab whatever appeals to me. And I liked the colors of these, so that's why I chose these, but they are pretty hot. So just simple, I'll mix all these together. I'm going to put a little bit of lime juice in there and season it with some salt and pepper. Perfect. If you could season it and mix it up there, I'm going to flip this fish because it's looking like it's done on the first side. Oh, it looks great. There we go. Now, while I have it flipped, I'm going to turn the heat down to low, and I'm going to season the other side of the fish as well. There you go. Now, the last thing, sorry, I shouldn't say the last thing. <laughs> one, one of the two last things that we're going to be putting in this is uh, a sour cream mixture. Okay. And then to top it off, we're going to add some nice sliced avocado. So for the sour cream, I just have about a quarter of a cup there. Mm -hmm. That looks very nice. Thank you. <laughs> that does. The salsa looks absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. Really nice and fresh and colorful. Okay, so that's ready. Perfect. We can put that to the side. Just get rid of those. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Uh, for the sour cream, I'm just going to mix it with a little bit of uh, taco seasoning. Okay. I've done taco seasoning before, so you can get the recipe on the internet if you'd like. Um, just a mixture of different spices, 
Uh, you can make it as hot or as mild as you like it. I like it a little hot, so it's extra spicy. So you've got things in there like garlic, chili, cayenne, pepper, all sorts of stuff. And of course, you can find all of the ingredients for this recipe at terragreenhouses.com. Exactly, and so we're just gonna mix that up. And it's really simple, but that's gonna be you know, a little sauce that we're gonna put inside. Fantastic. Oh, okay, that looks good. I think it'll be a nice contrast to the fresh fruit there. And lastly, we have a nice fresh avocado. Of course. Gotta avocado have it. is one of my favorite things to eat, whether it be in a sandwich or tortillas or even in a salad. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're just going to slice some thin slices here and we'll put that in the tortilla on top of all the other ingredients. Looks great. Oh, and that fish is starting to smell so good. Yeah, it looks like it's just about ready. A couple more minutes, I would say. All right. So slices up, this is a beautifully ripe avocado. Sometimes you're, you're never really sure what you're gonna get when you open it up, but <laughs> this one looks lucky. perfect. Fantastic, so we'll continue working with some fresh summer flavors right here. We'll get that avocado all sliced up. When we come back from the break, we'll put the mango salsa on there and we'll show you how to assemble everything for a perfect summer treat, ideal for the barbecue. Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. Welcome back to Terra at Home, where Chef Rachel has prepared us a beautiful Bassa tortilla, perfect for a nice uh, light weekday meal or maybe a weekend lunch out on the balcony or the patio. Mm -hmm. So we'll just recap a little bit what we did here. First we made a salsa, so this mm -hmm. is fresh mango, some red onion, green onion, a little bit of hot pepper, garlic. Uh, and some lime juice, seasoned that with salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. We also made a uh, seasoned sour cream with some hot taco seasoning. And we just fried up a couple bassa fillets in the frying pan. When they were done, I got my spatula and broke it up a bit into chunks. Big pieces like that that we're gonna put in our tortilla. So Perfect. let's assemble. I have the tortillas in some tin foil because I just put them in the oven at 375 just to warm up. Mm -hmm. So we'll start with a little bit of the sour cream. Mm. It's gonna be good, I'm excited. All right, so a couple pieces of the fish. There we go. Our spicy mango salsa. It's gonna add a nice fresh flavor to that. And since we have it here, why not some cilantro? That sounds great. I think that's a perfect match. We'll put in some nice fresh strips of avocado here. Finish that off. Oh, that looks great. Beautiful. And, and once again, of course, you can find this in all of Chef Rachel's recipes online at terragreenhouses.com. There we go. And then you can just fold it. Perfect. Ideal for a summer meal, whether indoors or out. Join us next week for more great recipes from the kitchen and more entertaining tips from Tara at home. Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives.